a famous graphic novel, and an infamous film adaptation. This is Zack Snyder's Watchmen. In this video, I'll recap the story for you so you understand what the heck is going on. The movie opens in Edward Blake's home. Edward Blake is a watchman known as the Comedian. As he's watching TV, a mysterious attacker breaks in and throws him out of the window. We see his dead body and the iconic Watchmen image of a smiley face with blood as we go in to the opening credits. Throughout the credits, we see flashbacks of the Watchmen when they first formed. It shows their influence in society throughout the years and how they were once admired as superheroes by the public. However, the credit sequence continues to show the change in perspective over time. Vigilantes are no longer respected and instead have become outlawed. Most vigilantes are now in hiding. We go to the Rorschach character breaking into Blake's apartment. He is looking for clues to who committed the murder. We are introduced to Dan Dryberg, known as Night Owl. When he arrives home, he sees someone has broken in. It's Rorschach. Rorschach tells Dan about the comedian's death. Dan tells him he's not surprised. He says the comedian had a lot of enemies and this was bound to happen. But Rorschach says an attack on one of them is an attack on all, and he feels concerned that someone may be hunting down the Watchmen. Dan, on the other hand, isn't convinced that anything needs to be done. Dan then goes to inform another one of the Watchmen of the comedian's death. He goes to see Adrian Veidt, known as Ozymandias. Adrian also shows very little concern over the murder. He says Rorschach is a sociopath and the comedian was practically a Nazi. Adrian is not concerned about being attacked himself. He says he is far more fearful of the Soviets launching nukes. The world is on the brink of nuclear war and the whole world is on edge. We cut back to Rorschach breaking into a facility where two more watchmen are at. While doing so, he is reading logs from his journal, a common occurrence with the Rorschach character. We learn his journal is important to him and he records all of his findings there. When he gets inside, he meets with Laurie Jupiter, known as Silk Spectre, and John Osterman, known as Dr. Manhattan. Rorschach tells them about the comedian. The two are surprised but seem preoccupied with other things. Dr. Manhattan can normally see things throughout time. However, he claims his ability to see the future is blocked. He says, likely by nuclear holocaust. He is and was unable to see Blake's death. Manhattan and Laurie also don't seem too concerned about it. Instead, they are preoccupied with something else. Dr. Manhattan forces Rorschach to leave. Lori and Manhattan have an argument. We see they are in some kind of romantic relationship and are having a fight. Lori leaves and goes to have dinner with Dan. She tells him of the nuclear holocaust Dr. Manhattan has mentioned. She is fearful. At the comedian's funeral, some of the watchmen gather for his burial. We meet Lori's mother, Sally Jupiter, one of the original watchmen, the former Silk Spectre. We are shown a troubling flashback of the comedian abusing Silk Spectre in the early days of the Watchmen. We begin to learn more about what kind of person the comedian really was. In another flashback, Dr. Manhattan and the comedian are seen fighting in the Vietnam War. We continue to see more horrific acts being done by the comedian. Blake tells Manhattan that he could have stopped him for doing those things, but says Manhattan didn't stop him because Manhattan is becoming more out of touch and that he is caring less and less about humans. Dr. Manhattan does not disagree with him, he just sighs. We continue to see more flashbacks of the comedian with other watchmen. All of them are showing how terrible of a person he really is. Rorschach is still out searching for clues. He confronts a character named Moloch, who he saw at the funeral. Moloch gives him a story about the comedian, says he came into him crying and confessing something, but Moloch has no idea what it was about. Rorschach believes him. Back with Lori and John, we see them breaking up. He appears distraught. He tells her she's the only link to reality he has left, but Lori says she doesn't want that responsibility. She leaves. Manhattan goes on to a talk show to be questioned. Many people are fearful of him and not entirely sure if he is supposed to be a good guy. One person claims that all people he has been close to now have cancer. 
the woman he first loved, Janie, comes out and reveals that she is dying of cancer. He is concerned that this may actually be a problem. As he is being bombarded with questions, he becomes frustrated and teleports to Mars. We go to a flashback with John before the accident. He is with Janie, the woman he first loved. We see the accident happen that transforms him into Dr. Manhattan. John recaps his early challenges as Dr. Manhattan. He takes us through his relationship with Janie and how he first met Lori. We start to understand how John has slowly changed into Dr. Manhattan and how he is slowly losing his connection to humanity. We cut back to John on Mars as he is saying he's tired of people. Meanwhile, the US government is fearful that the Soviets will attack now that Manhattan is on Mars. Back with Adrian at his office, an assassin attempts to kill him. Adrian stops the attacker, but the man uses a suicide pill before he can get any information. Rorschach is still continuing his investigation. He's becoming suspicious of everyone, including Lori and Dan. He goes back to Moloch's to try to get more information, but Moloch is dead. The police are outside waiting for Rorschach. It's a setup. He attempts to escape, but ultimately is captured. His mask is taken off and identity revealed. While being interrogated, he retells some of his brutal history that made him become Rorschach. Once locked away, we see a variety of criminals he locked up attempt to go after him, but he is too outmatched for them. Lori has gone back to Dan's place. We see them becoming closer with each other. We see Dan stressed about something. Him and Lori scratch an itch they've been having and suit up to do some hero work. They also decide to help Rorschach escape because Dan knows that he was set up. When they get back, John is there waiting for them. He takes Lori to Mars with him. Rorschach and Dan continue looking for answers to who killed the comedian. They question a man about the assassin who attacked Adrian. He mentions Janie Slater was the one who put him on to hire the assassin. Janie Slater, of course, is Manhattan's old love, the woman who now has cancer. While on Mars, Manhattan questions why he should bother saving humans from a nuclear war when he doesn't feel connected to them anymore. Lori tries to convince him otherwise. We learn Janie Slater, Moloch, and the assassin who tried to kill Adrian all work for a company called Pyramid International. Rorschach suspects they could be the ones giving people cancer and setting Dr. Manhattan up. Dan hacks into Adrian's computer. He discovers Adrian's company is contributing funds to Pyramid International, and he finds out that Adrian is actually behind everything. Lori continues to beg John to help. He shows her her mother's past. We learn that the comedian was really Lori's father. Lori is very upset by this. John has a realization. Ultimately, he decides that he will help her and people on Earth. They go back to Earth. Meanwhile, Rorschach and Dan head to Antarctica where Adrian is hiding out. They confront him. We learn Adrian himself killed the comedian. Blake was getting suspicious of Adrian's master plan, so he says he had no choice. He had to kill him. Adrian also spent his fortunes on creating a device that would block Manhattan's ability to see through time. This is why Manhattan could not see this coming. Adrian was the one to give those people cancer as well. He knew it would affect Manhattan emotionally and that it would drive him off the planet. Adrian used this to get Manhattan out of the way of his plan. We learn Adrian also was the one who killed Moloch, which set up Rorschach to be arrested. Ozymandias continues his monologuing. He describes his master plan in detail. All this time, he's been replicating Dr. Manhattan's power to create nuclear bombs. He intends to detonate those bombs across major cities. He believes humanity is a threat to itself. In order to save billions, he must kill millions, he says. And he intends to blame it on Dr. Manhattan, giving the world something to fear in order for people to not fear each other anymore. As they are trying to stop him, he tells them they are too late. He already detonated the bombs. When Lori and John return to New York, they see it has been blown away by a nuke. John and Lori immediately teleport to Adrian's hideout to confront him as well. Adrian attempts to destroy John in a device he built. He thinks he's gone, 
but as he's fighting the others, Manhattan returns. Adrian shows them President Nixon informing the world the attacks were by Dr. Manhattan, and the world has now made him enemy number one. The world powers are shown uniting against a common enemy. Adrian claims this has saved the world, essentially bringing about world peace. He tells them if they expose the truth, all of that will crumble, and the world will once again be at war. Dr. Manhattan agrees with him. He realizes if he tells the truth, it would only make things worse. Everything would crumble. But Rorschach disagrees. He says no compromises. Dr. Manhattan tells Rorschach he can't possibly let him tell the world. Rorschach tells him he's not going to stop. He gives him an ultimatum. He tells Manhattan to either let him go tell the truth or kill him. John says he has no choice. He evaporates Rorschach. Dan is devastated, but he knows there's nothing he can do. Him and Lori leave while John goes off planet again. In the aftermath, we see Dan and Lori together as a couple now. They are talking about the future, and they are hopeful that the world can move on. It appears Ozymandias' plan has worked. Even though millions of people were murdered, the world now seems to be at peace. In the final scene, we see Rorschach's journal, with the full truth, show up at a small-time newspaper who's looking for a good story to print. The end.